Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. I think I have another interesting video to do here. So, uh, well, I haven't even diagnosed the car, so hopefully it's a good one. It's, um, let me see, I haven't even gathered the bean of the car. So, so it's a 2005 um, BMW C4. Sorry, it's a, a little early in the morning or uh, late. This one has a uh, 2.5i, but the, com the customer complaint is um, the convertible top is not working. Another convertible top, yeah. And also, let me turn the lights as it was. I'm not sure if it's related or not. Uh, hopefully the video can capture right here that the left tail lamp, uh, the outer bulb is on, but very dim. Uh, not as we can see here that you can see it really really good so not sure if it's related if we got a just a, a socket problem on the back or not but those are the two complaints so I want to uh, run a scan see what I find obviously the connector the scanner is connected ah, that is not the bin I don't know what that is. Let me see one second, guys. Yeah, was something funny in there. I just click again on the read, and now I read the bean correctly. All right, so always double check that whatever the scanner has uh, read is correct. Uh, for uh, those that doesn't know, I'm using the Altil Ultra. Hopefully, is full controls and everything for convertible and not as the in the mercedes-benz uh, we have not the full uh, commands or kids that i also need to check all the switches and everything well let's see you know what codes we got and then we can go from there deciding if i have to pull ista out or not right all right i got all the readout let's uh, send the report to the computer So it has 59,000 miles. I haven't checked that either. I have the, I just passed the safety inspection in here so I can check that. Yep, that's a correct mileage. And again, for those that are using the piece link from Autel, and then you come here and then you can click the print and then doesn't do anything. Uh, you most likely are using a rubber uh, Adobe Reader for your PDF from your computer, which I mean, I will say probably 100% of people will. Just close this window down, forget about that. I mean, you need to have it open in order for that file to transfer from the, the scanner to the computer, but that's all you need it for. And then yes, do a search for a PDF in here and then just whatever opens in here just go over to open file location these are temporary PDF files and then just open the last one which is the one we just did pretty much as you can see here and now I can just select my printer and then get the print out which is what I'm looking for all right so <clears throat> I have seen different codes in here. Let me go a little smaller so I can fit more in the screen. So we got codes in the DME, on the ABS, safety and information module, the instrument cluster, the vehicle immobilizer, and the center console switch cluster. So let's see if that is anything related with what we're looking for. Digital motor electronics interface, EWS, immobilization system hmm. and it's present this is uh this is a weird code to be here this is your immobilizer card is running i mean i have no complaints of like a cert startability so i'm not sure it says that we have a problem with 
battery, you know, voltage supply on, on the module. Again, it's nothing to do with what we're looking for. Uh, all right, so that give us no results. Let's see if we have any um, I mean, um, the convertible soft up. It has no code. <clears throat> uh, let's see what we got into each of these uh, menus. One thing I don't like about BMW is this. A device things into into modules and uh, or you know different menus and they give you really mi minimum information. Well, we got terminal RM15 on. Uh, those are necessary for you know to be alive. Let's see what is the key uh, K bus telling us. Temperature windows are closed. Doors are closed. Uh, yeah, but actually windows are not closed. So that one is closed, but not this one. And it says window. So we'll have to look into more into which window is looking. <clears throat> All right, so this is what I need. Control button open, control button close. Convertible tab compartment floor. Convertible top is in the closed position. Locking hook is locked. Cow panel motor inactive. Phone relay is off. So, yeah, we need all these ones. Let's go over the car <clears throat> and see if we can change the state of that window open to close. Get that hook released so we can duplicate the problem. Oh man, I'm too big for this little course, so bear with me. Hopefully, I don't disconnect the scanner. <laughs> As I always mention, uh, when you work it in, I just disconnect the scanner. So, one second, guys. Yeah, less communication. So, let me reestablish that in. At the same time, let's put the leg of the ultra so we can put him like this. Hopefully, we can just, yep, and that work. Wasn't so bad. All right, as I always say, work with the car running. Okay, now we got a no start. Huh. And it ran and it run now. So for some reason, that um, immobilizer is setting codes. Let me go back to that. I'm sorry that I'm taking a little time for something that I'm not even getting paid to, to look. But now this one was just a voltage. This one vehicle immobilization shows it as present, but I want to reread the codes. Because as you can see, right now it's absent. So it does have some, some issues with the Emo. Um, the battery was a little low, and hopefully the video captured that too. So let's go back to the EWS and see what it's reading now. See right now it shows us absent. Immobilizer, it doesn't show me if it's present or not. Yeah, this doesn't have present or not, just on the engine. But yeah, as you guys can see, or so, the car didn't want it to start. And that is no good. Uh, so let's go over to... I think it was, yeah, the okay, bus information. I'm gonna try to open the window. Yeah, so it's reading that window only. 
So I just open the passenger side. I just close it. Oh, yeah. And now it goes to yes. Not only on the passenger side. Driver door is doing absolutely anything. Again, I'm opening the window right now from the passenger side. Releasing the button. All right, now I got the driver's side window closed and the passenger window open. And it still shows us windows closed. Okay, now I'm opening the, the window on the passenger side and went from close to no. So it reads both. But as long as one is open, you see now I have the passenger side closed and it shows windows closed. So it's it's a it's a chair switch. All right, so that means it's fine. All right, so we can disregard this one, which is fine. Always check your inputs. Switches are very important. Computer needs to see that windows are open or closed in order to retract the the convertible. So I want to make sure. I want to record it just in case I miss something later. Sorry, guys. Okay, so this is just the locks. I'm just operating the door locks, see if anything changes. No. I'm going to open one door. Let me see if I can open the sunroof. I am pressing the control button to close, it says. Now pressing the one for open. Locking hook is lock. So you can see the, the switches. That is the button to open. Which is actually the one I'm pressing is right here. This looks like close and this looks like open to me, but I'm going to press this one, the one with like no convertible, convertible fully open. And you see how it says uh, close. So sometimes they name it backwards, but both signals are being received. <sighs> Gotta look into that lock, because the lock, the locking hook is always locked. It doesn't change, so see how I'm pressing right now, open. The lock is sustained lock. Convertible position, close, that doesn't change. So let me get, they gather a little bit of information. Again, always you try to reproduce the customer complaint. And it is, I got the locks open just in case you, wonder and uh, that's what i was trying to see if that has anything to do with that and it doesn't i don't see any manual levers so i think that that should be done electrically but let's uh go and get ourselves familiar with the system and then we can see what we need to find all right all right, guys, so one thing that I want to check before we go any further with the whole test is make sure the shelf in the trunk is locked into place. He has boxes in here. Um, I don't like the way this looks. I mean, you have a big box when you want to lower the convertible i'm not sure if it's enough room for that here so let's get all these things out all right i got all the boxes that we got here and this is the shelf you see that all right this was like that 
and it has to be like this. You think it could be that simple? Well, it might be, because that is a very important switch for the convertible. So let's uh, try to open or close the convertible tab because we got no codes. Yeah, I got the car running. And now it's working. Yep. Hopefully you guys can see that. That's it. <laughs> All right, so very quick and easy diagnosis. Make sure that that shelf is, is locked. I'm glad I went to check that. And you cannot have all these boxes in there. I mean, you want to shut your convertible. Let me show you that. He has all this uh, stuff in the trunk. And that switch has to be, you know, in that position. Look like the boxes will be okay as long as they're not hitting that. And probably when he brought that box in there, he maybe moved that up. So let me close and open the uh, convertible a few times to see, make sure it's working good, and we go from there. I'm gonna put those boxes back in in, in the trunk. <clears throat> see if it's something is happening because of what is in the trunk. Or if the switch is popping out <clears throat> when the convertible goes in, you know, up and down. <clears throat> I'm sure you guys got a good position for that. Yeah, that's a good one there. And the bottoms, they are in the correct position. The one with like the convertible close is the close and the one with a fully convertible open in here is the way it is. So tail has that in the pits wrong. Yeah, it's working good. It's releasing and everything is good though. So. so one more time. And you don't want to do that too many times because you don't want to overheat the pump. But it's working, so that's it, guys. Uh, <laughs> a quick and easy repair. So hopefully this can help somebody. A quick tip, check the position of that tray. All right, see you next time. Hopefully this can help somebody.